Hi there, it's Rob here from the Gym Center. I hope you're well. Welcome to this Mobility Method training session. Okay, so today we're looking at some daily routines that you could bring in to your daily habits. And habits are really important because habits make champions. What do I mean by that? Create a set of habits of stretching and mobilizing before you go to bed, and certainly mobilizing when you first wake up in the morning. And when I say mobilizing in the morning, that doesn't mean grabbing your iPhone or whatever you use, a smartphone, and texting and getting your thumbs moving. It means waking up your body ready for the day ahead. If anything, the last half an hour and the first half an hour of your day needs to be a bit of tranquility. So switch off the devices and give yourself that time. Obviously, if it's an urgent message or whatever, let that deal with it. And then give yourself peace and quiet. Grab yourself a pint of water. I hope this session really helps you. Cheers. Okay, putting the water safely to the side, switch your mobile phones off. Let people know you're taking part in the training session. And as always, close the doors, put on some quiet music and find yourself a space. I'm just going to check around one way, check around the other. Make sure you have plenty of room. We're going to stretch up above head and then slowly release. And drive our pedals forward and we're just going to slowly work through a calf raise. Now, if you're finding that difficult, grab the wall. Okay, alternatively, you could do alternate calf raises. So you're working your left and your right foot individually. Now, as you're doing it, if you're finding a bit of a swagger and a sway, just see me and sense your body a bit more. Now, if you're doing individual, so you're doing single, single, you might allow yourself the knuckles to roll over and give yourself a bit of extension through the front and the upper part of the foot. If you're working on calf raises, just side by side, I want you to feel your big toe and little toe are square down to the floor. And they're equally taking the load as you press up and back down again. Center your body, drive your pelvis forward, lift your chest. Let your arms flop and drop down beside you. And see if you can pronounce that chest upwards and more centered towards the ceiling. Let your shoulders lean back and close your eyes if you feel comfortable. Now, if immediately when you close your eyes, your balance is gone, slow down and feel it control. Again, if you're finding the balance is too much, grab one finger, place on the wall beside you, and just at that proprioception, help because you're lifting and lowering, knowing that your body is safe. It's amazing the effect of just a fingertip on the wall can really help your balance. So from here, we're now gonna stretch our arms out wide. We're gonna to go to alternate raises. So as before, you're just gonna allow the knuckles to fully extend up and over. Now, as you're working through this movement, see if you can keep your big toe, little toe down to the floor, and then roll right over the top and the bridge of the foot. From here, relax in the arms and just work your right foot forward. And I want you to feel that your right knee went straight and forwards as well. You're gonna allow a bit of pressure and the extension through the front of that right shin. From here, you're gonna allow the right knee to flex. And you can do that by allowing the left knee to join with it slightly and allowing yourself to drop through that movement. The idea behind this is we're stretching out all the muscles on the front of our shin. If we do this, we now push the heel out, back to middle, and then back to the medial side of pushing inwards. Now I want you to take note as you're doing this, if I turn facing away from you, as you push out, is there any pain? Do the pelvis, like me, tilt to the side as you come across? Allow your body to work in unison now. So if it needs to turn and the hip pushes up because the body's moving to take pressure off the big toe, allow that movement. Just creating joint mobility. And if we can get our pelvis to switch on as our toes and our ankles are moving, by allowing some movement, we're really helping our anatomy for the day ahead or the day of recovery that you've just done. Change feet, so you're gonna work again. 
Once you change your foot, your right foot might feel a bit awkward. Make sure you're doing this in bare foot as well, if you're doing this. If you're using trainers, you've got a bit of sponge, a bit of, you know, almost a bit of orthotic in there that's going to prevent that movement from feeling it comfortable. Again, allow a bit of movement as you're working through to that plantar flexion and the extension through the front of the shin. Ankle, toe, and the hip mobility, they're all linked. And without doubt, there are strong links between the mobility of your big toe and all your toes, straight through to the movement of the ankle, to the movement of the knee, to the movement of the hip, to the movement of your back, to your neck, to your shoulders. Amazing the how the body will compensate to work through. And it's no surprise because, well, let's face it, that's how gravity works, right? You're all pulled back in towards the center of the earth. So if you're skew if you're getting pulled into that skewer position. So center your body and use your skeleton. Release, shake it out. Our next mobility is side bends. We're going to reach down to the right side. We're going to allow the pelvis to tilt. I want it to sway to the side, but at the same time, you're going to keep those legs nice and straight. The shoulders are going to be back, the chest raised. We're working through that lateral bend. Chest stays high, the shoulders will tap back into position. Now go slower and reach down to one side. Imagine you're in that toaster, you're keeping yourself nice and straight here. We're lifting the top arm up high and reaching over. So my right arm still reaches down to the right knee, the left arm comes up, and then we're going to stretch and reach up as high as we can with that left arm. The pelvis again tilts to the left side. My right arm reaches down to the lateral side of that right knee. My top arm pushes up higher and reaches higher. We're slowly going to come out of this, but we're going to keep our top arm up. We're going to take the other arm up to meet it. And we're just going to side bend here with arms extended. Allow the pelvis to move. Glide side to side. Feel the extension through the torso. And release it. From here, reaching down to the opposing side, whichever you're working on. So I'm going to my left this time, stretching high. And again, I'm going to push my pelvis. So my left hand reaches down to the outside of my left knee. I'm going to push my pelvis out to the right. Now, if you find you get a bit of a trapping in between your shoulder blades like I did, just let yourself out of that move, just give it a shake, and then come back into it. There's nothing gained by aggravating a muscle group. It's just the possibility of injury, which is not worth it. When you're in this position here, I want you to again take notice of what's happening in the feet. The big toe to the little toe and the heels all ground down to the floor. The left hand is reaching down to the side of the left knee and we're really dropping down to height into that. Take this top arm and stretch and reach a little bit higher. Taking the other arm back up to reach. Interlock the fingers, lean back and press your hands up to the ceiling. Tilt to the right, extend the arm straight. Come back up, tilt to the left, extend the arm straight, lengthen out through the body. And release. Shaking it out and taking the feet out nice and wide. From here, you're going to wake through your pelvis. So we're going to have our feet nice and parallel to each other. Very easy to turn the feet out. We're going to hold it in here. We're going to tilt the pelvis behind us. Stick our bottom back, keep our chin high. We're going to lift. We're going to squeeze through our glutes. We're going to lean back, bring our hands on top of our pelvis, raise our chest up to the ceiling. Okay, it's all slow movement. We tilt across the pelvis, 
And we're getting to lower again. We're going to feel that lengthening through the back of the hamstrings. The big toe, little toe, heel down to the floor. Leaning back, chest up to the ceiling. And again, tilt. Glutes engage strong, squeeze through your hips, drive your pelvis forward, lean back, lift your chest up. Slide and glide the hips back. This time, dropping yourself as low as you feel comfortable. Feet still remain parallel. Bring your hands on top of your thighs and adjust your feet. Put your big toe to your little toe. They're down to the floor and the heels ground down to the floor as well. I want you to feel an equal distribution between your feet and your heel. Now, whatever feels comfortable to place your hands is where we're going to go. So it could be on your lower back. It could be on your thighs, it could be on your shins, it could be on the floor, it could be on your feet. Wherever feels comfortable. What I want you to try and achieve is your knees to be straight. Okay, so we've got a little softness in them, but we've got the legs as long as possible. We're going to push the hips back behind us and tilt that pelvis out. Now, if you can go lower, that's great. If you need to come up, that's great as well. You're challenging your body. Now, I want you to change your hand positions. So if you're on your feet or the floor, you bring them to the shins or to the thighs or wherever feels comfortable. You might find that you need to put your hands on a chair or a table. It's absolutely fine too. From here, see me take one arm and place it into the small of the back. And then take the other arm as well if you can. Now in this position here, you're going to take your hands and cut them together. Allow yourself to drop through that position. You might be able to put forearms together. You might have one hand on your forearm. Like I've got there. You might be able to clasp both of your forearms like this. Now as you do it, Check your feet. I want them nice and parallel again. Now, if you're struggling with that, just go back to wherever felt comfortable for your hands. From here, we're just going to allow a little bit of a tilt up and back down again. If this aggravates anything in your body, come back a position. So it's small little reps. Now for you to lift your chest up and down in this position here, you must be feeling the muscles in your glutes, right in your backside. If you can't feel it, straighten your back and lift your chin up. Look straight ahead. This is brilliant. If you spend a lot of time at a desk, or if you trying to get some extra distance in your golf swing or your golf drives. If you play any rotational sport, if you do a lot of running and you're trying to improve your VO2 max by improving your lung efficiency, by improving the way that your body breathes, this is great for you. You're gonna turn your toes out to a 45 degree angle. What you'll find here is that we're now following diagonal fold of the body. So in other words, knees tracking the second toe, and we're feeling our big toe to little toe down to the ground. Take the moment to close the eyes. Slow deep breath in, slow deep breath out. From there, you're going to turn the feet out a fraction more if you can. You'll feel the stretch is very different in the back of the legs. And again, still trying to work your lift lower of your torso. So the glutes are working hard, hamstrings are finding an activation as well, all working tightly. Walk the feet in another turn. And then before turning the feet completely to parallel, before lifting. 
Releasing the arms, lifting the chest. Really good. From there, coming into standing, work your hamstring curl. So you're going to work through lifting your heel up to your bottom. We're going to keep our knees where they are. So we're not lifting the knee and then heel raising. We're simply gliding the foot back and lifting the heel up to our bottom. Chest stays lifted. Nice extension through the front of the thighs. Awesome. From here, we're going to stand facing forwards, a feet of fist gap apart. Lift our chest, turn the toes to parallel. Take the left leg out wide and slowly control the lower back hip. Lift again. Now use something to help your stability. It's a broom handle, a chair, a wall, a settee, if you need to. Now as you're doing it, lift and hold and pulse. Go, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one, and release. Well done if you managed to correct your balance if you were going off tilt. Again, take one hand to the side if you need to, feet parallel, this gap apart, lift wide lateral, and again, taking it as high as you feel comfortable, drive your pelvis forward, bring your shoulders back, lift and pulse. Go eight, seven, six, Five, four, three, two, one, and release. Shaking it out. Coming through into kneeling. We're going to take the left foot, take it straight forwards. Now, if you find it difficult to be in a kneeling position and take it into the lunge, place a cushion underneath the knee to support. Take your right hand over the top of your left thigh if the left knee is forward. Alternatively, the opposing if it's the, if you've got your right leg forward, bring your left hand over onto it. Now this little rotation of the torso, we want to pull our shoulders back and lift our chest. Feel a nice deep stretch all the way through that hip flexor that's possibly a little bit short. Now, as you've gone through into the stride, you want to feel the big toe to the little toe, and knuckles down to the ground. Can you stride a touch more? From here, releasing, changing legs, right leg forward, knee to the ground, pelvis driven forward. Shoulders back, chest lifted, so again, I've got my right knee forward, I bring the left arm across, place it on the top of the thigh, shoulders back, pelvis drive forward. See so we get a little bit more turn. Four more, three more, two more, one more, and release. Dropping three, and if you can, extend your knuckles of your toes down to the ground, sitting onto the back of the heels, and feel the extension through the front of the shin. Keep your chest lifted, your shoulders, blades drop back into position, and hold. From here, we step forward out of the kneeling position. 
Sit yourself through into standing, feet fist gap apart, hinge and drop. Circle the arms out wide, stretch up and overhead. Do two more for me. So tuck, hinge, drop, lift, stretch, rotate. One more. And release. Really, really well trained. Hope you enjoyed that. Utilize some of those exercises. And again, like I start the class with, what can you build in to make your habits? What would you do every day out of those stretches and those exercises? It could just be one, but it'll make a big difference to your lifestyle if you just did it. So good luck. Let me know how you go on with it. And as always, if I can help, get in contact. Grab your water, hydrate well after that session. Well done. Cheers. See you next time for the next one. Thank you, Rob.